We've been talking predominantly about the use of circulating tumor cells as biomarkers, both from the point of view of how to develop it as a um, prognostic model, how to integrate it into drug development, and how to set the stage for ultimate use as a potential surrogate marker for outcome. One of the big problems in prostate cancer is that we don't have reliable indicators of disease activity. We do measure PSA, but that doesn't always give us uh, accurate information about the overall patient's clinical status. We've been working most recently on androgen receptor signaling inhibitors, which is an interesting story in that it follows the genetic profiling of prostate cancers at different points in the illness. And what we've learned over time is that there's a series of changes that occur in particular the, in the pathway of androgen signaling so that there are changes that uniquely activate the androgen receptor and now there are specific targets for different part, points in this pathway. There are two right now that are in clinical testing. One is a compound called abiraterone acetate. This was originally developed at the uh, Royal Marsden in the UK and it's directed at a mechanism whereby prostate cancers learn how to make their own androgens. It's one of the survival mechanisms that occurs over time. A second compound that's under development is called Medivation 3100, and this was developed by Dr. Charles Sawyers while he was at, um, while he was at UCLA, and specifically targets a second alteration whereby the number of receptors and the expression of the receptor is increased. Both of these compounds have gone through very rapid early phase development and are in phase three testing in registrational trials. Um, it's really not so much a matter of stage. Um, what circulating tumor cells have helped us do is first, it gives us a measure of prognosis. So we know, for example, that there are patients who have high cell counts in the circulation generally do, do not do as well as those who do not have cell, um, high cell counts. Um, that particular test gives you a number. The number doesn't tell you anything about the biology. So the second component of this is to use circulating tumor cells as a form of a liquid biopsy. Can you look at the circulating tumor cells at the DNA level, at the RNA level, at the protein level to try to figure out what makes each individual patient's cancer grow? The two drugs that I mentioned um, are inhibitors of AR signaling, but as they target different mechanisms, we're learning how to study the tumor cells to find out which drug might be most applicable for which patient. And the idea would be is to have a patient come in for a blood test and say on the basis of this blood test, we can predict with this um, likelihood that you will respond to this agent. The second way that circulating tumor cells help us is that if patients are shedding cells and we treat them with almost any type of drug and they no longer shed cells, that gives us an indication that the treatment's actually working. And that's the measure that we're trying to build into the phase three trials to see if it can potentially be uh, part of a surrogate endpoint that would accelerate drug approvals. I think there are, um, it's clear that we've probably shifted the pendulum a little far, too far to the left and we need to understand a little bit more about what predicts for a clinically important cancer. And uh, by that I mean a cancer that, um, if left untreated, would affect both the patient's quality and duration of survival. Um, I think there is a sufficient data that will be available within those trials to help to understand who is at risk for developing that type of cancer. And you'll see different uh, algorithms applied based on that risk.